This teaching is going to be on uh, once saved, always saved. Is this a true saying? We're going to read the scriptures and see what the scriptures say because there's religions out there who say that you can lose your salvation. But then there's religions out there who say once saved, always saved. They believe in eternal security. But before I get started, in 1 Peter 3.15, it says, Always be ready to give an answer for what you believe in. So as I'm teaching this, write notes down. Study it for yourself. Take the script, write down the scriptures that I'm going to be giving you, and then study them for yourself. Because if you study them for yourself, then it's going to be planted in your brain. And the Holy Spirit will bring it into remembrance whenever you need to use it. Don't just say, well, the guy, the, the, guy, the teacher I heard said this or said that. Well, I'm just a man. When you say a man said it, well, a lot of times that doesn't carry very much weight. But if you can say, well, the Bible says, and give them the scriptures, well, now, you, now you're carrying a lot of weight. Now you got the word of God. So as I'm teaching this lesson, please write down notes, write down the scriptures. Always be ready to give an answer on what you believe in. I want to start off with showing that there was plan A. Two ways of salvation. Plan A, plan B. Plan A was the law. And then plan B was the grace of God. Now, plan A, the law, that's you saving yourself. And like I said, plan B is God saving you. Plan A is, has only been done by one person, and that was Jesus. Jesus was the only one who was able to come into this world and keep plan A. He broke no laws. He did no sin. So he was the only man who was able to do that. That's why he, he, uh, the Father brought plan B, grace, his son. Now in Galatians 2.16, it says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Now this says it pretty, to me, this says it pretty clearly. That works does not save you. These religions that say you have to have works in order to get saved, that's, that's not true, right? I mean, I'm reading the scriptures to you, and it says the works of the law does not justify you. Does not. You do the works of the law after you, after you give your, your life, your heart to the Lord, then your works are followed by that. You get saved, and the Lord says you become a brand new creature. You got a new way of walking, new way of talking. Now these are works. These is the, you, this is the new life that you start living. But this can only come by the Holy Spirit when you receive Jesus into your heart. Works is what follows after you get saved. But it's not what saves you. Galatians 3, 3. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh, meaning the law? What Paul is saying is you are a fool. If you think that you, if you got uh, saved, through, if you're going to get saved through plan B, but stay saved by plan A, the law, he says that's foolish. Right here in Galatians 3.3. 3. Like I said, write these scriptures down, read them for yourself. Paul is saying right here is foolish to think. That you get saved by plan B, grace, but then you keep your salvation by doing plan A, the works. Galatians 3, verses 10 and 11. But those who depend on the law to make them right with God are under his curse. For the scriptures say, curse is everyone who does not observe and obey all the commands that are written in God's book of the law. So it is clear that no one can be made right with God by trying to keep the law. For the scripture says, It is through faith that a righteous person has life. It is through faith that a righteous person has life. It doesn't say it is through your works that we have life. It says through our faith that we're made right with the Lord. Keeping His commandments. Like I said, these are things that happen 
when you become a Christian, you'll want to follow His commandments. His commandments are are uh, are coming from the inside because we want to do it. People out there who are gritting their teeth and they're trying their best to do it, well, they're not doing it through the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will give you the power. The Holy Spirit gives you the strength to walk with the Lord. Religious people, they grit their teeth because, remember this, there's a lot of people who say, I believe in God, but remember that the devils believe in God. Even the scripture says that the demons believe in God and they tremble, which they ought to. So just saying, I believe in God, does not make you a Christian. You can go to church every Sunday and still be wrong, not walking with the Lord. Because walking with the Lord is putting Him in your heart. Going to church does not save you. Putting Jesus Christ in your heart is what saves you. Galatians 5.4 Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. Now this doesn't mean that you've lost your salvation, you've lost your grace. It doesn't mean that. Those of you who want to believe you're saved by the law, then grace isn't for you. If you believe you're saved by the law, plan A, then plan B isn't for you. That's what it's saying here. You have fallen from grace. That means grace is not for you. Because you're believing in the law to save you. That's what this verse means. Now the scripture talks about we die. And he dies. It's talking about Jesus. We die and Jesus died only once. In the justice system, you can't be judged twice for the same crime. It's called double jeopardy. So we can't, the Lord doesn't ju- uh, judge us twice for the same crime. In Hebrews 9.27, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. We all died because of Adam and Eve. When they took of the fruit, we died. Because God told them, if they ate of the tree, that they would surely die. But as we know by reading the Bible, they didn't physically die. They died in the spirit. So that was our, our dying once. We've died. We, were, we were with Adam and Eve when they committed that sin. So we've all died already. And the scriptures say over and over, over and over, that how we are dead until we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. He gives us life. So we've already died once. I hope you understand what I'm saying. We have already died once with Adam and Eve in the garden. Because God said you will surely die. And we did in the spirit. Now the Bible speaks about apostate people. Let us not get confused when we're reading the scriptures between an apostate person and a Christian. Let's don't get confused because there's there's scriptures that are addressed to people who are apostate people. And then there's scriptures that are for Christians. We need to learn how to read the Bible because not all the words in, in the Bible, the words of God, not all of them are addressed just to Christians. Hope you understand what I'm saying. I'm going to teach you here that the Lord addressed lost people in the Bible and said things to them. And we can't get confused and take it like he's speaking to us, born-again Christians. An apostate person is one who has head knowledge. He knows about the Lord. And he even does things that are, that are Christian-like. But sooner or later, he goes back to his own self. So he really never totally given his heart to the Lord. And to give you an example of it, 1 John 2.19 they went out from us. And right here, the verses above it is talking about antichrists, not the antichrist. It's talking about people who don't believe. Little, the little antichrists. But they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Of us. Right here is saying, if you're a born-again Christian, you will continue with the Lord. But if you're not, you won't continue with the Lord. And Judas Iscariot is a perfect example of this. He was one of the disciples. He walked with the Lord. 
But you know, he never did, if you read your Bible, he never did call Jesus Lord. He always called him teacher. And the Bible speaks about how you can't call Jesus Lord without the Holy Spirit. But Jesus was an apostate. He had the head knowledge of who Jesus was. He even walked with the Lord. But he never really got born again. He never really did give his heart to the Lord. And he went out from Jesus. Now let's read the scriptures. Let's, let's read what the scripture is saying. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 10 through 17. Paul is speaking to lost people here. And I will explain the, the scriptures to you. And this is why I say they're lost. Verse 10. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake. That they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Paul says he endured for the elect's sake. Paul was in jail. In Acts 16, 22 through 31, when Paul was in jail, guards were being saved. The elect here is God's people. Well, not God's people, but in uh, 2 Peter 3, 9, it says, the Lord says, He is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. So the elect, as God chooses everyone, God chooses everyone to come to repentance and not perish. But we are not choosing Him. He has chosen us, but we're not choosing Him. And there's a lot of people like that. And the reason I say that because the scriptures say broad. Broad is the way to destruction, meaning hell. And narrow is the way to eternal life, meaning heaven. Meaning there's a lot of people who are going to go to hell. And there's only a few people who are going to go to heaven. Because there's a lot of people who don't want to choose the Lord. They don't want to say, yes, Lord, be my Savior. Be my Lord. I give you my heart. They don't want to do that because they want to live the way they want to live. Or they want to live the way their friends want them to live. Or family or whoever. They're not willing to give up, die to self, and give themselves to the Lord. But right here is saying that they may also obtain... They don't have it yet. So that's why I'm saying he's talking to lost people here because they have not obtained the salvation of Christ yet, the eternal glory. They haven't gotten it yet. Read verse 10 again. That's what it says. Verse 11. It is a faithful saying, For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. In Romans 6, 4, We are buried with him by baptism into death. So we also should walk in newness of life. That's what verse 11 is talking about. You give up self to live for the Lord. That's what it's saying. Verse 12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Now let's really look at this one because there's religions out there who say, well, if you deny him, he will deny you. And they're talking to Christians. That's They're talking to Christians. But right here, I've already showed you, we're talking to lost people. These verses are for lost people. If we endure prosecution and hostility without being killed, that is evidence that we, are really, that we really belong to Him. So also shall we reign with Him. And uh, in 2 John, verse, uh, 2 John 9, it says, Anyone who leaves the world, excuse me, Anyone who leaves the word is not of God and never did belong to him because if they were his, they would endure. Like I said, I'm going to keep saying that over and over. Please read the scriptures for yourself. Read them. Anyone who leaves the word is not of God and never did, never did belong to him. It doesn't say they once was belonged to him and then they lost it. It says right here, it says they never did belong to him. Okay, in Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Now in John 6, 6 to 4 through 66, Jesus said, Some of you disciples will not believe. That was the Christ. No man can follow me unless they are drawn by the Holy Spirit. Now after he said that, 
many of them went back and walked with him no more. Verse 13. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. So what it's saying here is, even for those who won't believe, the Lord is still faithful on who he is. He still offers salvation until they reject him. Verse 14. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive uh, <clears throat> not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Back in verse 10, it says these people, they haven't received the Lord yet. He's reminding them, if you die with, uh, with Christ, if you die with Christ, you shall also live with him. If you suffer, then you shall reign with him. If you haven't received him, he will wait. And if you deny him, he will also deny you. Now, in verse 14, it says, Of these things put them in remembrance. So this is what he wants them to remember. The things I just read to you. This is what he wants them to remember. And who we, and who's the them? They're lost people who have not received the Lord yet. And he tells the ones who are giving false teachings that they will be accountable to him because they have confused the hearers. That's what this verse is talking about. Then verse 15, <clears throat> Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It's saying you're, you are not ashamed when the Lord examines your work, your walk with Him. If you're, if you're walking with the Lord, you should not be ashamed of it. That's what it's saying here. Then in verse 16 it says, But shun profane and vain, and vain babbling, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. He's saying stay clear from foolish discussions. It will just lead you further away from the Lord. Stay clear of it, he says. So I hope you understand the verses I just read. These are not verses that are, that are to the Christian person. These are verses to people who have not accepted the Lord. So when it says, if you deny him, he will also die, deny us. Well, he's talking about lost people here, people who have not received him. He's not talking to Christians in verse 12. And some religions te teach that. If, if, you, uh, if, you, if you're a Christian, but then you mess up and you deny him, then he'll also deny you. No, that's not what the verses teach. They're talking about it's addressed to lost people. Read these verses again and, and know who the Lord is speaking to here and who these verses are for. We're going to read John 6. Verses 60, 64 and 66. It's Jesus speaking here. He's talking to his disciples. And it says in verse 64. But there are some of you. Speaking to the disciples. That believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning. Who they were that believed not. And who would betray him. And verse 66. From that time many of the disciples. His students. They're called disciples but they were students went back and walked no more with him. They were just like Judas Iscariot. They were, they were there in, in mind, but they weren't there in heart. Because they, they, they were believing that Jesus was going to set them free and, and all this, and they were wanting it now. But Jesus came as a servant the first time. Now his second coming, yes, he will come as a king. And probably this is why they were following him, because he thought that he was going to come as a king at that time. And when they saw he didn't, that then they were going to have to give up themselves to walk with him, they decided not to. And it says, and, and they walked no more with him. So there's a difference of, uh, between an apostate person who has the knowledge and even walks with the Lord, walked with him, but their heart is not there. Salvation is totally from the heart. you got to give the Lord your heart, not your mind. There's a lot of people who's giving them their mind because they know and they and they and they believe the word of God too, but they haven't given them their heart, and that's what an apostate Christian is. He acts like, he talks like, and he even knows the scriptures, but he hasn't given the Lord his his heart. Now here's a verse that some religions use to show that you can lose your salvation, and that's First Corinthians chapter three verses nine through seventeen. Well, verses 9 and 10, then 16 and 17. But verse 9 says, For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. 
You are God's building. Now right here, the Lord is talking to Christians. We are God's buildings. <clears throat> Verse 10. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. So what the Lord, what verse ten is saying right here, you know, Paul was the master builder because he gave out the word, he preached the word, and then there's other who builds on that word that he like, like teachers or preachers, you know, they'll preach, they'll teach, and then the Lord will send someone else to add to that teaching. And this is what Paul's talking about. But at the last part of that verse, he says, "But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon." So what he's saying here is, watch, watch who you listen to. Because there's people out there with other Gospels. And he's saying, watch what you build your house on. Make sure it's the Word of God. And the reason he said watch is because of that. There's wolves. And if you drop down to verse 16, Know ye that ye are the temple of God? Saying again what verse 9 says, We're his building or we're his temple. It says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Verse 17, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Now, there's people who believe that if you smoke or you drink and you're destroying your body because that's the temple of God, then God will destroy you. No, he's not talking about Christians here. In verse 17, if any man defile the temple, relate going back to verse 10, when it says to watch therefore how you, what, how you build your house, because there's, there's, there's wolves out there. There's people with another gospel. If you listen to them, the Lord says in verse 17, If any man defile the temple, if any man defiles you, trying to give you another gospel, him will God destroy. Not you, the Christian, but the person who's trying to give you another gospel. The person who's trying to have your house built on something else other than the word of God. It says, that man is defiled. That defiles the temple. God will destroy. It's not talking about you, the Christian here. I hope you can see that. I hope you I hope you understand what these verses are talking about. Second Peter chapter two verses twenty through twenty two. Now if you read this chapter, this chapter is about false teachers. It's not about Christians. It's not talking to the Christians, it's talking about false teachers here. Verse twenty for if after day whose day? The false teachers have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge, through the knowledge. Remember, there's a lot of people who say they believe and they know, but they haven't given the heart. Through the knowledge of the Lord of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again, but then they are entangled again in the world. That's what it's saying. The devil tempts them to come back into their old ways. And the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Verse 21. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. It's going to be worse for them because they knew and then went back. It's pretty much what Matthew's chapter 12 verses 43 through 45 speaks about. It backs up this verse right here. It says, When the unclean spirit is gone out of the man, he cleans his house, and the, the spirit is gone. He doesn't Now he doesn't feel it. With the Lord. He doesn't fill it with the Holy Spirit. He just cleans up his house, his heart. He walks through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. This is the, the Spirit, the unclean Spirit. It's, then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out of. He's going to go back to the person which he came out of. And when he has come, he findeth it empty and swept. That's why I say he didn't put the Holy Spirit there because his house, the heart is still empty and swept and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto his wicked generation. Unto this wicked generation. So when you know the Lord, when you know his word, but you don't receive him, there's a, there's a teaching on where the seeds fall, if the seed don't doesn't fall on solid ground, which is your heart, if it falls on thorns, yeah, you clean up yourself, but you didn't you didn't clean yourself up with the Holy Spirit. You cleaned yourself up. 
but you didn't put the Holy Spirit here, in there, in your heart. And this is what this is talking about. You clean it up, but you didn't put the Holy Spirit, so the devil comes back, the demons come back, and you're even seven times worse than what you were before. That's what it's speaking about. And in verse 22, it says, But it is, but it is happened unto them according to the true proverb, The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow, which means pig, that was washed to her wallowing in the mirror. Now, when it talks about it's a true proverb, it, it is in Proverbs. Proverbs twenty six eleven. It says, "As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly." That's what the word says. When you don't put the Holy Spirit there, you return to your fo- you return to the way you were. And it talks about a pig here. You know, you can wash a pig. You can wash them. You know how pigs are; they're dirty. You can wash a pig, but he's still a pig. On the inside, he's still a pig. Until you put the Holy Spirit there, you know you're, you you you, clean, you can clean out the outside, but it, if you're not cleaning the heart, then it's right here. You're still a pig. You're still dirty. Second Corinthians, chapter five, verse seventeen. It says, "Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new." So the dog, the pig, and the Bible is an unclean animal. So, but when you become a uh, a born again Christian, you become a new creature. Like that pig, the pig can clean itself on the outside, but on the inside he's still dirty. But right here, if you give your heart to the Lord, you become a new creature. So you're cleansed on the inside also. Now, First Corinthians chapter nine, verses twenty-four through twenty-six. <clears throat> know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run. That you may obtain. <clears throat> so everybody who runs in a the race, they all run for the same prize. And right here, that prize is like a reward. Now we should live our lives because we will have rewards in heaven. The Lord speaks about rewards in heaven on how we live our lives down here. So if you want rewards in heaven, do what he's, do what the word says to do. And there's many places in the Bible that talks about it. And in verse 25, every man that striveth for the Mastery is temperate in all things. Now they that do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. So it's saying that they must deny themselves of many things. You know, runners who run, they they can't go out and just drink beer and smoke cigarettes. Nah. If they expect to run the race, they have to be obedient. And making their bodies healthy and good so they can endure a race. And it says, now they do it to obtain a, in, a, a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. Crown or reward or prize is, is the same thing here. Here on, here on earth, your prize doesn't last. It's a corruptible crown. But we're going for the incorruptible crown. The one that the Lord gives us. The one that we'll receive in heaven when we make it to heaven. So these are good These are good verses right here to show that we should run the race. Meaning, live the life that the Lord has given us to live. Do the things He has commanded us to do. Because all through the Bible it tells us the way we should walk. And that's the way we run. Walking with the Lord. Verse 26. I... I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I. We fight to win battles in life, that's what it's saying. Not as one that beareth, beateth the air, talking about not like a boxer who shadow boxes. That's what it's talking about here. In verse 27, but I keep under my body and bring in into subjection, meaning being totally obedient to God, lest that by any means, meaning unless I do this, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Meaning right here, people will not listen to you. As a result, you will be losing rewards. Not your salvation, but rewards. People, people who witness to other, to the lost people, because that's what Christians do. They tell people about Jesus, how to give their lives to the Lord and have salvation. People, will, you're a castaway. We don't fit in. Being a Christian down here on, in this world, 
is not popular. We are the uncool people when it's really the other way around. Because really, we're the cool people because we recognize who Jesus is. We recognize him as our Savior and that we need him to make it to heaven. So really, we're the cool people and they're not. But in the world, it's, it's backwards. So this, I myself should be a castaway, all that means is we're not accepted. That's pretty much what it means is that we're not accepted because of the way we believe and the way we believe to make it to heaven. Because, you know, there's a lot of people, a lot of religious people, there's a lot of people who believe if my good outweighs my bad, I'll make it. If I go to church every now and then, I'll make it. Well, that's not going to get you to heaven. Being a good person does not get you to heaven. Because in Titus 3, 5, it says it don't matter how righteous you are, unless you have the righteousness of God, the Holy Spirit living in you, you're not going to make it. But anyway, that's what it says. That's what it means right here as a castaway. We're just we're people who are not accepted because of what we believe.